Hey everyone, welcome to House Call. I'm Dr. Ruben Brock. In the last couple of weeks, I think it's safe to say that the COVID-19 or coronavirus has absolutely dominated the news cycle and completely turned our world upside down. What I've noticed though is that there's really a lack of information and even misinformation about what we're really dealing with. So what I've done is I've uh, assembled a really distinguished panel of guests to talk about this virus and what, what you should know. So I have with me here pediatrician, Dr. Tara Faust. Good morning. State Senator, Pam Iovino. Thank you. State, State Representative, Tim O'Neill. Good morning. And so what I wanna do is just talk about what's going on here. So my first question will be for you, Dr. Faust. Uh, I feel like there's just a lack of information. There is general confusion about what we're dealing with. So can you help me understand uh, what is the coronavirus? A lot of people have compared it to the flu. Um, help me understand, is this worse than the flu? Sure. There are two major differences between the COVID virus and your general influenza outbreaks that happen yearly. The first one is the fact that it's novel, meaning it's brand new. This is a brand new human virus. Our immune systems have never seen it, which means none of us have immunity to it. That means that anyone in the world could get this virus. Their body has no immunity to it. The second difference is its mortality rate. The influenza mortality rate is approximately, give or take, about 0.01%, meaning one out of 1,000 people infected with this virus could die from it. The coronavirus, on the other hand, is anywhere between three and 4% mortality rate, meaning three to four out of 100 people that become infected with the COVID virus could die from it. So the mortality rate's much higher and the ability to infect anyone in the world is obviously much higher. And so in response to that, here in Pennsylvania at least, the governor has basically shut down any non-essential businesses and we are being asked to what we're calling social distance. So, so create social distance. But what I've noticed is that there's a lack of understanding about what social distance means. I've heard people saying, make sure someone's six feet away from you or 10 feet away from you. Uh, but I also look outside my door and I see teenagers hanging out outside ha having what looks like, you know, typical summer party. Can you help me understand what's safe and what's not? So the coronavirus is considered a virus that is transmitted through droplets, meaning um, most best case scenario um, or, or most common case scenario would be through sneezing or coughing, the respiratory droplets. Those travel approximately six feet, and that's why you're hearing stay six feet apart um, if you have to be around somebody that does not live in your household. So in an ideal world, we only are with the people who we live with in our household, or we are at least six feet away from anyone else because of the respiratory droplets that cause the infection. So you're saying your grandmother that doesn't live in your house actually shouldn't even come over. Correct. If they don't live in your household, you should not be together. Okay. Senator Iovino, I know you and I have spoken and you said that there's, there's been a lot of movement in the General Assembly and from the, from the governor. Uh, what should people know about what the state government is doing? Uh, thank you, Ruben, and thank you again for the invitation to join you today. On Tuesday and Wednesday of this week, the General Assembly passed a package of four bills and the governor signed them all into law yesterday, Friday. And they addressed things that had to do with unemployment compensation, um, election, our, just our primary election this year in 2020, and then things for schools that are seeing a, obviously a significant disruption in trying to navigate that. And I could talk about each one individually. I mean, um, uh, Representative O'Neill and I were, you know, the, this is legislation that both of our chambers saw and acted on. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And Representative O'Neill, um, I'm hearing a lot of people and I'll, I'll pick on you for a second, and, and particularly um, from the Republican side of the political spectrum saying that, that this is sort of like being politicized um, and overhyped. Do you agree that, that there's too much hype or that this has been politicized? Well, it, it's really a great question. I, I, think, I think what their criticism comes in, and first and foremost, 
by the governor's actions, it clearly, whether you agree with his actions or not, it clearly sends the signal that this is an extremely serious situation that we all need to take seriously. Um, now, with that said, you know, my colleagues specifically, as you mentioned in the Republican caucus on the of the House, we, we are concerned about the balance between uh, our liberties, our, our guaranteed freedoms within the Constitution and controlling the virus. And we're very aware uh, that, that through some of the governor's actions, some of those liberties have been taken away in very, you know, in a lot of cases, maybe very justly so. We, we, like I mentioned, we have to take this seriously, uh, but we also have to balance that with ensuring that our republic uh, and, and our nation in the rights that we've had for generations continue exi to exist through this crisis. And I'm glad you said that. You bring up a good point because there are people, uh, particularly the president, is saying that he wants the world up and running again by Easter. Ultimately, the goal is to ease the guidelines and open things up to very large sections of our country as we near the end of our historic battle with the invisible enemy. We're going for a while, but we win. I said earlier today that I hope we can do this by Easter. Dr. Faust, is that reasonable? I unfortunately don't think it's going to be reasonable. I would love for that to be <laughs> the truth, but I, I don't think that that's going to be reasonable now. Okay, and maybe I'll let uh, Senator Ivino answer this one. Uh, do you believe that the president's handling of this situation uh, has been helpful, has been damaging, difficult? In all due respect to your question, Dr. Brock, I don't think um, taking shots at the commander in chief is um, is helpful, okay. um, and and I'm and I have the privilege of serving at the state level, and um, I would say if I could just go back to your the prior question about the politicization of it, is I have been very pleased and proud of the um, collaborative and bipartisan um, cooperation that the state of Pennsylvania has exhibited through this. This is a this is going to be a temporary but significant disruption to our lives. Um, this is a serious health issue and there will be a um, follow on serious economic issue. Right now, the paramount issue is the health, um, the health aspect of this, that we have to defeat the virus first and foremost. And then we public servants will be there to uh, do what needs to be done to get our economy and get our lives back to normal and up and running again. Thank you, I appreciate that. Re Representative O'Neill, uh, last night, I delivered masks to a nursing home in your district, um, suggesting that, as I've seen all over the country, uh, health care providers are running out of equipment, uh, are in need of personal protective gear. How did this happen? How are we, we caught so off guard? Well, I'll be, I'll be honest, Ruben, I think, and Dr. Faust might be able to speak to this as well, but um, the, the situation that exists is we're, first off, we're not out of PPE yet. All of the calls, all, all, everything is preparing for the worst of, uh, of the spike in cases of the virus. Uh, and the, the fact of the matter is we're still the best prepared country in the world when it comes to dealing with this. And I think you're actually seeing that through some of the statistics of the cases that we are get, getting compared to the, the deaths that we're experiencing as well. Uh, I, I would like to reiterate or, or uh, highlight what Senator Ivino said. This past week was a historic week for for the General Assembly in the state of Pennsylvania. It's the first week in, this, in the history of Pennsylvania that we've conducted legislative session, passed major legislation in a bipartisan manner, uh, from remotely as at that as well. Uh, that was that was all of the leaders of the state coming together. In one of those packages was actually the freeing of. Uh, of, of a significant amount of money at the state level specifically geared towards acquiring PPE. We understand that um, many 
many places are in a situation where they have the potential to run out. Uh, but I, I could tell you from the state level, we are acting to ensure that, that we could acquire that as quickly as possible and ensure that our frontline providers are given the adequate protection that they need. And I, I've got to give Dr. Faust an opportunity to speak to that. Dr. Faust, you're on the front lines. Tell me what you see. Um, it's one of our greatest sources of tension and worry. Um, I can tell you that I have experienced it. Um, I have not had full equipment when I would have liked to. I can tell you that um, I'm married to an emergency room doctor. Um, it's a great source of tension for him as well. Um, what we what we need and what we have there there is a difference um we do feel like perhaps we need to reuse things that maybe we shouldn't reuse um hold on to things a little longer that we wouldn't ordinarily hold on to because we are worried um at the lack of ppe for us and again you know what's already been said we, we haven't seen our surge um, we know our surge is still coming we haven't seen our surge so it is a great worry for all of us. It is a source of great tension for all of us. Um, it, it, every day we count supplies, we look to see what we have, we look to see how we can get more. I'm sure you've seen in the news, I'm part of a, a health network that actually asks the public for help, um, non-medical public for help in donating supplies. People have been wonderful. It has shown the good in people, thankfully. Um, they've, come up, they've come through for us, but it, it, it's a great worry for us. Senator Ivino, maybe I'll give you another opportunity. You said you didn't want to take any shots at the president, which I can respect. Where did all the misinformation come from? I think the word novel says it all. We've never seen it before. There isn't a person alive who's um, lived through a pandemic or a, a natural disaster or anything of this magnitude. Um, you know, maybe short of uh, our very, very um, uh, heroes of World War II who are still with us. It's more than misinformation. I think it's, um, it's gaps in information. And then unfortunately those gaps can get filled in with things that are inaccurate. But I don't, I'm not sure there's a, a, a place to point a finger specifically. Okay. And Dr. Faust, I'll give you the last word. What do you want people to know? You've got, you've got to do the job of, of taking care of folks, your husband's in the ER. Um, what do you want the general public to know? Uh, I want them to know this is real. It, it is scary. It is new. Um, we're all learning together, which I think is a, a new situation for all of us. Um, I want them to not wait until it's in their backyard. Don't wait until the numbers go higher. Don't wait until you know somebody that has it. I sort of see that happening on social media. People saying, I don't know anyone that has it. You know, this can't be that big of a deal. Don't wait until you know somebody who has it. Be proactive stay home, stay with your families, you know, social distance, please. <laughs> so I, I thank you, Dr. Faust, Senator Ivino, Representative O'Neill, for, for taking your time. This is an absolutely unprecedented situation in our country. And so I thank you all for the work that you're doing. And I thank you for taking your time to be with us today. Absolutely. Thank you. So I want to switch gears for a little bit. We spoke to a couple of Pennsylvania lawmakers and now with us to talk about West Virginia is Lisa Zukoff from the West Virginia House of Delegates. Uh, Delegate Zukoff, um, the early reports that I've seen suggest that West Virginia uh, early on wasn't hit at all and, and, and that reports are saying that there's not been a terribly aggressive outbreak in West Virginia, but I'm hearing kind of anecdotal information that suggested that might not be accurate. Can you speak to that? Yeah, I think that um, we started testing later than most states. And right now we um, have only tested a little over 2000 um, residents in our state. And of those 2000, we have around, we have 96 confirmed cases as of yesterday, and we have tests pending as well. And I think some of that is happening because we didn't have enough capacity in the state to do the testing ourselves. As I think many other states have done, we're hiring independent labs to assist with that. Um, but I would say we have just now gotten up to around 150 sites around the state where folks cannot actually go and get tested. And um, I think also that 
if folks have um, the symptoms and they're going to their doctor or the doctor and they're not, now that the protocol has been developed, people are starting to test more. But I think that's definitely been um, an issue here. We just haven't tested like everyone else has. Mm. So in other words, you're saying we don't actually know what is happening in West Virginia because we're not testing as aggressively and therefore there aren't as many confirmed cases. Exactly. Because of that, we don't necessarily see, or many people don't necessarily see it as a, a dangerous thing to be going in and out of West Virginia. People are still working. And, and, and your, your governor, uh, Governor Justice, um, he put out a list of the essential, just like in Pennsylvania, the, the essential businesses that would continue working. But the list of businesses in West Virginia seems to be pretty extensive. I mean, it, it, one would question whether or not there's been much of a shutdown. Exactly. I think we're seeing some people are sh shutting down, um, but we really have that list isn't extensive. It's the CDC list, so it doesn't go into a lot of detail, unlike Pennsylvania and Ohio, which I can speak of because I can be in both states in, in 15 minutes where I live. Um, we, you know, the lists are very extensive, very, you know, Excel spreadsheets. Here's what you can be, you know, this is, this is essential. This is non-essential. It's very vague in West Virginia. So I think that that's, that is actually um, hurting us as well. Uh, I've also heard, yesterday I had two calls from two employers, actually employees, who um, had colleagues that tested, um, that were being tested. They had symptoms. Um, and their work co-workers were told to keep on working because, um, you know, until those folks test positive, you can just keep working as, as normal. And that's not good. Um, you know, so we have to, my understanding is if you've got somebody that you've been around that has symptoms, we're supposed to be quarantining immediately until we know whether they have the virus or not. So I think those kind of things have me really scared about what's going on in our state. Right, that, that creates a dangerous situation because people are going on with business as usual, but also could be spreading the virus more aggressively because what we're being told is that social distancing is really what's gonna slow this thing down. Exactly, I spoke to an employer yesterday, construction related, um, and they said that they had sent somebody to be tested. And my me, I said, are they sharing tools? Are they practicing social distancing? Well, they were practicing social distancing, but they were sharing tools. And this person that was on the site went to be tested, but they won't know for you know a few days. Here, we're even taking five, six days to get test results back. So if you are infected by that person for five or six days until you know, you're infecting, you could be infecting everyone around you as well. So um, those are my main major concerns. And, and so what would you want the people of West Virginia to know? What would you want them to maybe voluntarily do differently? I just say stay home. Um, I know it's really hard, but we just got a, you know, a huge package passed by Congress yesterday. People are gonna be getting assistance. Um, they're gonna be able to have access to food. And, and the other thing is West Virginia is a very vulnerable state. Our government, our governor has been very clear about that. We are like one of the top states in the country for our elderly population. And we have a lot of sick people that live here too. You know, we have high rates of diabetes. We have high rates of heart disease. We have COPD, which goes back to the coal industry. We have miners with black lung. These people are all susceptible to this, to this, to succumbing from this virus. And it's really scary. And so I say, stay home for grandma, you know, stay home for grandpa, stay home for the babies that are in your family. Um, if this, yeah, this is awful. It, we don't know how to act, you know, our whole system, you know, as far as being out and about, it just goes against our very grain, but we're saving lives by doing that. So bear with us and be patient. Right. And I'm glad you brought up something um, that I believe is misinformation. Uh, lots of people believe that young people aren't going to be impacted by this. They're, it's going to be, you know, basically like having the flu. Your body's going to fight it off and you're going to be fine. But you brought up something that's important, that the older population isn't going to be able to do that. And the young people could easily be carriers and take it home to grandma. Um, exactly. And, and so I appreciate... Uh, you, Delegate Zukov, for being here with us to talk about what's happening in West Virginia and what's happening all around the country. Well, thank you for the opportunity. And thanks for getting the word out about uh, let, letting folks know this is really serious and it's time to buck up, guys. 
stay home. If that's the if that's all that's asked of us, that's not very much. So you know we need to um, stay home and be safe. Keep others safe. Right. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So I wanted to talk about what we're seeing here and make sure our viewers understand what's going on and get accurate information. And so. Uh, I want to know. I want you to know what the medical community has been warning us about for several months, uh, and I know that our guests were hesitant to point fingers, but I do believe it's important that we hold our leaders accountable. And so, uh, as recently as February 28th, uh, at a, a rally in South Carolina, our president absolutely did minimize uh, what's going on with this virus. And and I'm looking at a quote here. He essentially compares it to the flu, uh, talks about the, the number of people that die from the flu every year. Uh, and at that time, February 28th, nobody in America had died and he pointed that out uh, and, and basically said, we've got this thing under control and talked about media coverage of this issue being a hoax. Um, and so I, I do believe that spreading that kind of information, talking about the fact that or, or the belief that this is being blown out of proportion has led people to, to suggest or believe that this isn't real. And, and, you know, I am in healthcare, but I'm not a medical doctor. So I, I call medical doctors on a regular basis. And what I'm hearing from them is that this is absolutely real and that they are running out of equipment because of the runs on, on their facilities. Uh, and so I do encourage folks to do exactly what Delegate Zukov said, stay home. Uh, there, if, if you do not have to be out, don't go out. You are going to save lives by just doing what they've asked. So in other words, when your family members in your house are together, you're fine. But if they don't live in your house, don't invite someone over. Don't have them in the yard. Don't play outside. Uh, it is just not worth it. Um, there are lots of people who are still going to work because they are in essential businesses, but I would encourage you to think about um, if it's not necessary, don't be out doing it. Um, so that's all we've got for today. I hope this was helpful for you. I'm Dr. Ruben Brock, and this is House Call.